We are here in beautiful Geneva covering the Swiss Mining Institute, and we're talking zinc today. And when you think zinc, you might think Peru, China, maybe not Ireland, but our next company is looking to change the optics here. Uh, joining me right now is Bart Jaworski. He is the CEO of uh, Group 11 Resources. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Daniela. Mining zinc in Ireland, how does that come about? Well, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but Ireland is actually number one in terms of zinc found per square, square kilometer. So there's a lot of deposits that have been found over a relatively small area. So that gives it that distinction. And Group 11 basically has the largest land position in the country. So we have 3,200 square kilometers. So that's about 800,000 acres in the country, which means we cover geological basins, et cetera, which is very important for, for our sort of Big Think initiative. But importantly, we own the second and third uh, largest undeveloped zinc resources in the country. So we have Ballinalak and Stone Park, and those each have about a billion pounds of metal in the ground, a sort of ground inventory. And, and the nice thing about Ireland is because of the infrastructure and your proximity to markets, et cetera, and your uh, year-round tidewater, you only really need two billion pounds of metal, roughly, to break even economically. Or we have this kind of rule of thumb in Ireland we call 10 and 10. 10 million tons of 10%. So let's talk about zinc because it's uh, in perhaps going to enjoy uh, some big success here because major zinc shortage is on our hands. There is. There's a 10-year inventory shortage or a low. Well, but when market. is the price going to start being reflective of it? I mean, we've seen we've seen some some indication of it, but I mean, a true reflection here. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm thinking, uh, you know, b the the shortage we're seeing in the market right now. Um, usually, what happens this time in the cycle is China usually turns on a lot of mines and floods the market with zinc. That has not happened this cycle, and I think the key reason for that is the environmental regulations which have come in into the country. So that's one thing that makes me quite constructive on the space. But also, zinc is starting to be used in fertilizers, especially in China, so that's, that could really move in the In fertilizers? In fertilizers, yeah. So it's a brand new, yeah, brand new concept. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's an interesting concept. Yeah, well, how, how, what's the usage like? Well, zinc is, a, I mean, zinc is a nutrient for the human body, so it's, um, and it's uh, very critical for embryonic growth and just in general metabolic processes. So they, if you add zinc to your uh, to your to the ground that you're actually farming on, it uh, does uh, your yields go up and your nutrition value goes up. So, it has been started to be implemented in those uh, in that direction. And also zinc air batteries, of course, this is a brand new thing that's got me very excited. For example, so the advent of grid power being used and zinc batteries being used for that, and that's on the back of a brand new. Uh, breakthrough technology by the U.S. Naval Office that you can sort of recharge zinc batteries now where you couldn't for the last hundred years, even though zinc was always a prime metal to use for, for batteries. So how well, important will them. that be in, within electrical vehicles? Well, it depends on the... I'm not a battery expert, and there's small batteries and large batteries. There's EV-based batteries, yeah. and then there's the grid power batteries. But, uh, you know, uh, Nant Energy is a great example. Recently, a billionaire out of Los Angeles that owns the Los Angeles Times has a company called Nant Energy, and um, they were just talking about how they put in about 100 of these units through Africa and um, they're cheaper and just as energy dense and they don't blow up like um, you know lithium ion batteries do. So I think it re really moved the needle. Let's talk about the Think Big initiative. Mm -hmm. That's part of your company. Interesting strategy here. Yeah, well this is really what sets us apart. I mean we uh, we have the ground position and the people to make Big Think work. The Big Think initiative really is to rethink the entire Irish ore field and do it in a systematic way, open-minded way uh, using data compilation coupled with cutting-edge technology. And this is the critical thing. Seismics, for example, has been very, very successful of late in Ireland to find new zinc deposits. And that has not been rolled out at all in Ireland, only starting to be since about 2010, 2011. But it's proving to find deposits, so we want to employ that technology. Ionic lead soil sampling is another brand new technology that's being perfected right now. We have a lab outside of Galway in, in Ireland, which is cutting edge well, for that. There's a whole other set of challenges, right? Mining base metals than you would gold or silver, the precious metals, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, does it take longer for a mine to come to fruition, to come to cycle? Than, uh, than say, a precious yeah. metal mine? Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a lot of zinc around, but a lot of it is uneconomic. Uh, and I guess you could say gold is scarcer, harder to find in some ways, but I think equally speaking, for a base metal deposit, 
these deposits um, in order to actually have the right dynamics. In Ireland, where you have the benefit of them being geometrically simple, clean metallurgically, they don't have a lot of penalty metals in them, they're coarse grain, so they liberate easily, have high recoveries, meaning they're profitable. And those are all the key aspects you need layered on just your basic uh, tonnage and grade uh, part of the equation to make them a go. You're working in a beautiful part of the world. Uh, Bart, thanks so much uh, for being with thanks, us. Thanks, And thanks for watching. We'll have more for you on Kitco.com.